Do you remember these books? If you are anything like me who loved drawing cartoons in the mid 2000s, you might have. These books, How to Draw Manga and How to Draw More Manga by Katie Coop, always stood out to me as a child and I distinctly even remember borrowing the first one on multiple occasions. Today I will be going down memory lane reading through these and maybe I'll even do a little art challenge related to these books. She was 16 years old apparently, or I, I think she was 16 when she wrote this. And I just hope I don't come across as making fun of these because I think they have inspired so many people to draw manga back when I didn't even know what manga was. And I just think that's awesome. So let's get into it. All right, so you're just gonna have to excuse the fact that they're all in Swedish because I borrowed them from my local library. So this is the first one, how you draw manga. I don't know what the English title is. Oh, here it is. How to Draw Manga was the original title. <laughs> and instantly I'm met by this very familiar face. I distinctly remember drawing this one. There are multiple types of uh, tools to choose, choose between. So experiment to see what fits you the best. Yeah, that's good advice. So this is definitely how I drew, how I learned to draw faces. You start with a sphere, you divide it, draw this line, apparently, you draw a uh, reversed J to draw the iris, that's good advice. Nowadays people would draw an Among Us instead of the J, uh, backwards J, but that's just the, the meta that's changed, I guess. And this is very distinct to um, Kate Coop's way of drawing manga, these really ch sharp side of your head and this is definitely how i used to draw my car uh, my manga characters from this uh sketchbook from from around 2010 i think when i was uh 12 12 years old i drew these exact faces you see that i was very into soccer at that point it's another example, I guess. Might be hard to see. Yeah, I used to draw these exact characters so much. This is so amazing to see this, to find this book again. I feel like I drew this exact character with this bandana in one of my sketchbooks. Maybe I'll find it. Oh yes, here is an even older, an even older example of this, where I drew this exact bandana even. Now, obviously the face shape, I screwed up a lot. But that's definitely this character, right? Even on this previous page. Uh, ignore that. That's the same character. This is also how I drew my chibis. Now obviously, Kate did a way better job than me. But you can tell it's clearly... <laughs> clearly inspired by this. The face is the most important part with all characters. It's also the face that makes it the most apparent how your art style looks. Faces can be drawn in so many different styles, it would be impossible for me to describe them all. Instead, we should look at what differentiates a certain style from another and what you can learn from it. The best thing you can do is try different styles and develop your own unique art style. But this is the face on the front of the book, right? So maybe we'll learn how to draw this one. I also found while googling about this book that people had done like some kind of redraw this character challenge. I might just have to do that. Now it's a bit of an old trend I guess. I don't know when that happened but that could be fun to try. What's interesting about Kate's style is that she draws this uh, the profile eye the same way as she draws the front view. I guess the, uh, the one difference is that it's a little bit more squished, a little bit squished together. Maybe we can follow one of these guides as well. Quite like this um, color gradient in the eyes, that's nice. Here she seems to have studied some different styles. This seems to be <laughs> Ash Ketchum's eyes maybe? Maybe Sailor Moon or something? Some shoujo manga? This one is very cute. Well, here we have something I very much disagree with. It's drawing the ear this far back. Feels a bit wrong. 
Th this is wild. This hair is wild, man. Facial expressions. I feel like I'd never made it this far into the book because my uh, characters definitely did not have a lot of uh, did not have a lot of emotion with uh, the eyes. Now that you can draw a perfect face, it's time to draw the whole body. Now this is a method I've tried a lot of times, but it's never quite uh, worked for me. I guess this, this is similar to what I do. Dude, I love these these crazy colored bangs that she always. That's like a that's like an I iconic Katie Coop character design right there. You know, I love her example illustrations. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm I'm just very impressed by this book so far. I mean, it's like the fact that she was just a teenager when she put all this together. It's kind of crazy to me. Okay, let's see what, how she explains backgrounds. <laughs> so she she doesn't really... I mean, it's like a very surface level explanation of, of one point and two point perspective. It's not a lot of... Uh, she doesn't go into a lot of detail. So at the last couple pages, it just explains all the different materials you could use. But I think that's about it for the first one. Now it only touched uh, on some basics, I would say. It doesn't really go into a lot of detail. It doesn't go into a lot of details with like the background, for example. It feels kind of rushed. Textures, that's fine, I think. But overall, it has like a, a bit of everything. It doesn't really go into detail how, like how you actually draw manga, you know, a story. All right, let's check out the second version of this. And I don't think I've ever read this one. Because I feel like this is the only one we had in our library growing up. And this is the one that all my friends used. I'm very curious to what they actually teach in this one. Already got a lot of little creatures. Oh, so this is only one year after the first one. How to draw more manga. Introduction, faces and bodies, clothes and gadgets, or uh, items, accessories. I don't know, uh, poses and action, animals, that's new, everything at once, okay, let's see, holy, we got the steampunk daddy over here, alright, so from what I can tell, it's very similar to the first one, how she teaches the face, we got some different face shapes, this looks like a goblin, straight up, this guy just got a barcode in the middle of his forehead. That's pretty badass. There's just something about this steampunk guy. Something just does it for me, man. So I was actually looking through my old, my old art books here. And it seems like between these two is when I read this Katie Coop How to Draw Manga. Because before that, let's see if I can find a character. Before that, I drew characters like this. What does it say? I'm Super MF Ceradomin King. Yeah, I don't know what that's about. But before I drew them like this, and after I kind of drew them like this. This is actually the same, almost the same picture. <laughs> this is like one or two years apart. Also, interestingly, in this one, it has like a whole uh, story about the the natural disaster in Haiti, which kind of dates this book to 2010. Again, she teaches the same sort of way of draw drawing the body. I love this page. This is like a this is just straight up a fantasy party that would go on some epic adventures. I bet. There we have it again. The crazy color bangs that she is so fond of. I love this furry drawing. That's pretty good. She is pretty cute. <laughs> I don't know why this guy just reminds me of Fox McCloud so much. The jacket and the and the microphone. It's interesting to see if she has like advice on paneling and like layouts for pages and stuff like that. Which I feel like would be essential for drawing a manga. Like how to make the speech bubbles. These are some pretty good hands. I feel like these hands are way better than the, the ones she had in the first book. This book is way more way longer than the first one I feel like but it's more it's more dense at least with the uh, information I feel like this is the most classic thing you can draw as a beginner artist like as a background just put some brick wall 
It just doesn't get more classy than that. Drawing someone sitting on a chair is so difficult. I hate drawing people sitting on a chair. But also a chair would never have this straight of a back. This feels like the only manga panel in the whole book series. Another manga panel? Now here's something I could improve on a lot. Now I bet some kids only used only use these pages. This is proof of it. The fact that this page is torn here. This this page has seen a lot of use. These creatures just look like some straight out of that game that Neopets. These these are straight up Neopets, right? I haven't played Neopets, but <laughs> I feel like they would fit in there, I don't know. Oh here we go. Thumbnails and layouts. So she actually explains how you'd make thumbnail sketches. That's really good. Again, the brick wall it doesn't get more classic than that. What are you waiting for? Take your pen, come up with an idea and start drawing. And don't forget to have fun. This must be this, a self-portrait of Katie. Very cute. Well, that was interesting. They certainly have aged, but ultimately I think they're still good books for starting artists to learn some of the basics. You got more than enough information in there to get started drawing, you know? And I think these books are proof that, that it actually worked. It got me to start drawing and just have fun with it. So it seems like she's still drawing. Every once in a while she still uploads some art on her Instagram and Twitter and stuff. Sword Timber. <laughs> these are great, man. She never got royalties for the book? That's crazy. She got, she got robbed. They must have made so much off of her. Well, anyway, here is her remake of this drawing. She made all those years ago. I guess I'll try to redraw it myself. Let's see, how would I draw this guy? Sort of like this. One funny thing in their uh, Twitter thread was that apparently the publisher had flipped the canvas like this for the cover of the book. Which she apparently did not like. Ultimately it's like, it's the same drawing but flipped, but of course she drew it that way, probably looked weird from the other way. Should I give him a sharp chin like in the original art? <clears throat> okay, let's attempt this crazy wacky hair that KT draws. This guy got some crazy hair, but it's so fitting for the time period of when this book was released. I feel like everyone had hair like this in manga. They still kind of do. I feel like having the highlight on this side. Oh yeah, his little, his little ponytail. I don't know if I took too many liberties with the with the hair, but I just I thought it would look nicer without the spiky hair. I did make the character a lot more feminine, but I suppose that's just what I'm more used to drawing. All right, let's color this a bit. So there you have it, how I would draw the cover of the How to Draw Manga uh, book in my style. I hope you liked the video and you don't want to miss the next